Hey guys, Alex, and uh, I was just listening to this awesome uh, CD. It's the uh, the soundtrack for Dinotopia, composed by Trevor Jones, and uh, it's a very hard to find uh, soundtrack. Pretty expensive if you look online, but very well worth hunting down if you like um, like movie and TV soundtracks. This is one of my favorites of all time, and uh, you have to listen to it in order to understand how I feel. And it won't appeal to everybody, but it appeals to me. But yeah, this was composed for the 2002 um, mini epic made by the Hallmark Home Entertainment people. Made for TV. It's called Dinotopia. And it's a 240-minute uh, long uh, made-for-TV movie. And I love it. Absolutely love it. But this is not to be confused with Hallmark's other Dinotopia outing called Dinotopia the Series. And of course, this is more of a uh, of a season of uh, Dinotopia episodes. So, because of that, it's a lot more episodic in nature compared to this, and it's got a lighthearted feel to it. That's not to say this isn't lighthearted. Of course, it is because it's based on a children's book. Yeah, this is considered by some to be cheesier than this, but I actually love both of them. Um, the TV movie is it's got you know lighthearted moments, but it's got a lot of serious moments too. And it's got one singular cohesive uh, narrative to it, which might appeal to people a little bit more, just because it's not as disjointed as the the TV series. But as I said, I like both of them. Highly recommend both of them. But yeah, Dinotopia. This is based on the James Journey uh, children's books called Dinotopia. Um, the first one was called A Land Apart from Time, and the other one was called The World Beneath. And I have the book right here. I don't have those books, but I have this one. This is called Journey to Chandara, and it's written by James Durney. And if you never looked at a James Durney Dinotopian book, they're, uh, they're hardback, pretty pretty thin, but it's got beautiful illustrations to it. Well, it takes place during the Victorian age, and um, let me show you a quick glimpse of what, what it looks like inside. If you, can, if you can see it... Yeah, basically, humans and dinosaurs coexist in this uh, utopian island society. So it's got some imaginative uh, costumes, and it's got this uh, steampunk feel to it. But um, the big difference between uh, the TV series and the uh, the books is that the TV series takes place in modern times, many, many, many years after when the books take place. The TV series does reference some of the characters from the books. They, they mention the the Denizens. I mean, those were the main characters in the uh, in the books. And they also mention the uh, the crabs, the crabs. Sorry, Lee Crab. He's kind of a shady character in the books, and he's a very shady character in uh, the TV series. I forgot his name already, but he's a descendant of the Crab family. Yeah, I started watching the uh, the, the Dinotopia TV epic um, a few years ago when I got out of the hospital. I, I, I'm pretty sure a lot of you remember that, but I was in the hospital for like a week. And when I got out of the hospital, I couldn't do anything for about four or five months. The doctor made me get exercise. And for me, exercise was walking a mile before I got exhausted. Like, I was in that bad of a shape. In that bad of a shape. Whatever. Yeah, during that time when I was recuperating, I was looking for things to pass the time to escape. I was reading books, as I, as I always do. But I was also looking for, for TV shows to watch. Such as Merlin. That was a great... Great series by the BBC. I'm still watching that, actually. Uh, Dinotopia. This is definitely my favorite made-for-TV movie. Or at least one of them. And... How do I describe this? Yeah, as I said, it takes place on this uh, utopian island society where dinosaurs and humans coexist, for the most part. Um, the main characters are are um, David and Carl Scott. But later on, you meet other other central characters, such as the mayor's daughter, and you also meet this uh, dinosaur character who talks. His name is Zippo Stenosaurus. Um, he's also a central character. But, yeah, they're from modern times, and a lot of their modern sensibilities, they do not, do not sync up with the Code of Dinotopia. And, um, yeah, I wrote the, the Code of Dinotopia at the beginning of this video, but just to reiterate, here's some, some of the codes here. Survival of all or none. Weapons are enemies, even to their owners. Basically, in the series, 
that means that if the T-Rex attack them, they can't really defend themselves, like, no matter what, because they consider all all animals to be, uh, to be precious, even the ones who are attacking them. Um, even dinosaurs who are kind of aggressive, they don't really consider them evil, they, they just consider them to be hungry by nature. Oh, here's what I don't agree with. Eat to live, don't live to eat. And actually, that was a very famous um, saying by, by an American president as well. But uh, basically, it, it kind of takes the joy out of eating. Like, you're just going to eat enough just to, just to live, but you're not going to, you know, go out of your way to have a, have a fine meal and enjoy it. I mean, for the most part. That's kind of an exaggeration, but it's kind of like that. And also something that they, they reiterate in the series is that they don't eat meat. They don't eat any animals of any sort. It's all, like, plants that they eat. And that would definitely be a, be a big no-no for me because I love going to places like Outback Steakhouse and Longhorn Steakhouse. I could not ever not eat meat because meat is part of my diet. Like, I just eat meat for a living. But, um, but once they get to the island, they have to try to fit in. And... As they try to fit into this Dinotopian society, that's where you really get to see what Dinotopia is like. And that, to me, is the best part of, of watching this. It's not the conflict that arises. It's, it's seeing how, how these people live. You know, it's the whole introduction, the whole first part of this mini-epic that I love. In fact, the mayor's wife, who is the matriarch, she makes them go to work, basically. And uh, the way Dinotopian society is assigned jobs... They're all assigned jobs from this matriarch. Yeah, I think she picks people to work at jobs that they don't excel at. For example, David Scott, he's afraid of heights, but she makes him work for the, uh, the Skybacks. Skybacks are basically pilots who ride on pterodons, and they, they go soaring through the air at very dangerous speeds and uh, maneuvers and whatnot. So totally not a job that David Scott would actively be looking for. And as for his brother, Carl Scott, she makes him take care of a baby dinosaur. And this guy, by nature, is very, very restless. Um, not really reckless. Kind of irresponsible. So he's not the kind of person you would see taking care of a baby dinosaur. Yet, she picks him to, to do this. So, in my opinion, I think that's how they pick jobs for Dinotopians. You know, they pick jobs where they're weakest at. And by, by working at them, it'll build their character, and strengthen them. Everyone has a, a role in Dinotopia. Like, everyone works. One Drop Raises the Sea. Um, definitely check it out. It's got a lot to offer. To me, it's, it's basically a, learning about Dinotopia is what appeals to me the most. It really immerses you. Kind of like how, how Harry Potter immerses you into the wizarding world. Like, I want to be taken out of where I live for, for two or three hours, four hours. And, and just live the way these characters live in these, you know, books and, and TV series. I think this is very excellent escapism. And highly recommended. One of my favorite made-for-TV movies ever. And I know a lot of people won't like it because it's too childish for them. Not as in being immature, but as in the, you know, the whole tone of it. It's, it's got that made-for, it's got that family feel to it, which I, I enjoy it. And this DVD has a lot of special features. It's got an interview with Trevor Jones, the guy who composed Dinotopia, the, the soundtrack. Um, it's got a cyclopedia. It's got a uh, Skybacks pilot game trivia, dinosaur fun facts, deleted scenes. It's got a lot of good stuff in it. Highly recommend. Um, but that's it. I just wanted to introduce to you guys this world of Dinotopia that I love. Maybe you'll love it too.